Hi guys. Um, well, uh, my name is Manuel Rubio. Uh, I came from Spain, and uh, but uh, now I'm working in Elan Solutions. And uh, well, I'm going to talk about uh, PHP. Well, it's where because we are talking always uh, about Erlang, Elixir, or other <laughs> Beam uh, languages. But uh, I make uh, something crazy, and uh, I thought uh, one day, why, why not uh, we put PHP on top of Erlang? And uh, well, that is the result, more or less. <laughs> and uh, in this uh, speech, uh, I'm going to try to go by uh, some specific journey. And uh, I'm going to try to explain PHP, but not the language. It's uh, more related to the platform, because uh, sometimes it's uh, forget that uh, PHP is uh, different from other languages. It, uh, I'm going to explain why and uh, how different is, uh, um, why is uh, easy to understand PHP for a lot of people, why is uh, useful for a, lo a lot of companies, and uh, why uh, PHP could be useful for use uh, on top of uh, Erlang or, or Beam. The second part uh, should be uh, Beam and what. Well, why PHP? You know? uh, why co could use uh, PHP, but uh, why or uh, what ca use case uh, can be used uh, for 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 us? You no, know? uh, we are using, for example, uh, websites, or we are using some critical systems. Uh, what are the use cases uh, we can implement PHP on top? And uh, the last one is uh, the implementation I made uh, of uh, PHP over Erlang, that is called ePHP, it's uh, available in GitHub. And uh, well, we start. First, well, what is PHP, of course. So uh, some features. Uh, what PHP is an accepted language, uh, of course, uh, is uh, another coolly based, uh, based language like Java or C. Uh, looks like uh, most of the companies, if uh, you use uh, Cooley Braces as uh, is an accepted language, if not, uh, well, it's our language, uh, we can avoid it. And it's easy to understand, uh, very simple. And uh, some specific thing I could say about, uh, for example, uh, PHP is simple than, uh, for example, Python, Ruby, Perl, of course it is, because uh, when you are using those languages, you are thinking about dictionaries, arrays, uh, hashes, uh, a lot of uh, difficult structures, well, not difficult, but uh, different structures that uh, is uh, developed or implemented in a different way. But uh, in opposition, PHP has only uh, array. You can develop everything with array. It's like uh, magic, you can implement arrays of course, is, is the name, but uh, you can put hashes inside of that array. You can even create objects from that array. You can do everything uh, with arrays. And uh, of course, PHP is very in use because we have a lot of a lot of uh, running examples uh, in internet. We can download, for example, WordPress. I think uh, most of the companies uh, in the world have a WordPress running uh, to to for the website or a corporate page or a landing page or something like that, it's because it's very easy. Uh, we have PrestaShop Presta or Moodle or uh, Wikipedia that is built on top of uh, Wikimedia and uh, other, a lot of uh, examples uh, about code that uh, was uh, developed uh, from the beginning in PHP. And uh, if you check uh, the last graph, you can check that 79% uh, uh, of the websites running in internet has PHP, are running PHP. So, well, I think it, uh, I, I, in the end, uh, PHP is very famous. So, and uh, we can check, for example, the typical Hello World code that uh, all the people say, well, if you want to uh, write a Hello World code in PHP, you have to write it in the first uh, way. But the PHP is very different because PHP is a template language. That means that uh, if I wrote a file, like uh, the second example, only put a 
to explain the uh, uh, hello world and run that in the web server or in the shell console, I get ex exactly the same result. So even the, the creator of PHP in the one speech said, uh, well, hello world uh, example is uh, the second one, not the first one, because it's uh, the easier uh, way to write a hello world example of code in PHP. So at the end, uh, we realized that PHP is not a general purpose language. It's a template language that should be in use for generate uh, from one template the result. So if you think about that, uh, you can realize that, uh, well, Erlang is great uh, to create critical uh, code. It's great to create uh, a lot of distribution, a lot of uh, hard things uh, in the low level, in the middle level. But when you are trying to put uh, everything on top of a website, we have not clear what is the easier way. And uh, sometimes it's very difficult to, to put something uh, on top uh, to develop uh, websites or something related to in, in Erlang. So if we can implement uh, this kind of template language to develop uh, exactly what is intended to do, that is uh, the output of a website only to get uh, the templating, the, the view of uh, the model, uh, well, the view of the, in the MVC uh, uh, pattern uh, to get uh, only the, 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 the presentation or uh, the, the output uh, for the, the website, we can get easier uh, what we want to get using Erlang, Elixir, or whatever other language we have, we have uh, under that. So here, for example, we can sh uh, see uh, in the uh, right part, uh, le left part for you, uh, an array that is a representation of, uh, well, it's uh, a hash, but inside of an array. That is uh, the flexible part of uh, the, the implementation of the data uh, we have uh, when we are using PHP. And uh, in the second uh, box, we have a, a normal use of, uh, for example, a, a, website, a web page or some HTML, uh, the middle part of uh, HTML. We can implement uh, putting some specific tags uh, for PHP. So the, the mission is uh, if we can get that code running on top of Erlang, could be maybe easier uh, to get uh, something functional, um, something working with uh, Erlang and PHP together. So about the, the, what I was uh, talking at the beginning about uh, PHP, uh, we have here the specific architecture of PHP that is a bit different from the, the other systems. Because, uh, for example, the context, uh, the use of the bars, classes, objects, uh, functions, and constants uh, could be uh, more or less the same in other languages. Uh, constants is a bit different because uh, usually the languages is uh, resolving that in the compilation and is not used uh, anymore. But PHP is uh, completely dynamic. So you can include a code uh, in runtime, and that needs uh, to get uh, the list of the contact constants in, uh, at that moment uh, to resolve uh, in running time uh, what uh, what is. And in the red balls, uh, you can see some specific parts that uh, are a bit different from the other languages because it's handle. Uh, uh, for example, the configuration is handled by the reading of the php.ini that uh, has all the configuration for the uh, for the initial or default system. But uh, even uh, you can ha uh, modify some specific aspects for the specific uh, execution uh, of your process. So that is because uh, I put that uh, middle outside, middle inside. Uh, because uh, you have uh, initiated from the beginning uh, some specific uh, behavior, for example, for the use of the streams, uh, if you want to access uh, to some specific stream uh, via HTTP, FTP, or getting files uh, from the file system, 
or you want to output the uh, uh, whatever you are handling uh, uh, with PHP uh, not uh, to the normal output that is configured but also to get that output and put it in the file system or a database or uh, whatever. Uh, so that is uh, possible to be handled uh, by default uh, because uh, in the configuration we can uh, set that for the general purpose, uh, but also uh, for each specific uh, running. So, well, another more example we have here a code uh, I made. Uh, this is uh, a code of uh, roughly uh, 20 lines that is uh, in production uh, in one server I put uh, some time ago uh, for a company. This is only getting a request in uh, AP REST. Uh, is uh, getting the JSON the request, uh, putting that uh, in a, a specific SOAP uh, call. Uh, throwing that uh, to the to the other part, getting the result, converting to JSON and back. That is to show uh, how PHP easier could be. Um, in this case, for example, uh, we are not using it as a template language, but uh, you can realize that uh, right some specific things could be easier uh, if you handle in a high level language than the if you needs uh, to go inside uh, in a different way. Uh, for some kind of uses, uh, could be okay. For others, well, depends on the, what is developed. And in this case, for example, the sub client was implemented in PHP and that, that is a, a good point for it. Well, the second part is BIM and YPHP. So, well, uh, my experience with Beam is uh, I was working mainly for telco companies, uh, and telco companies, uh, at least in Spain, use uh, a lot of uh, PHP. But uh, that is because uh, uh, the main of the vendors uh, for the implementation of the uh, logic of the calls is uh, using voice XML that is uh, implemented uh, in a HTTP way. So the flow is. Uh, the machine receives a call, the machine needs the logic, and then requires that logic to a HTTP server. And uh, the HTTP server is generating an XML that is telling to the machine what is made, uh, what should be to, to be the, the interaction with the call. I get that, uh, well, it's very small, but it's a karaoke uh, code, not complete, uh, to uh, for when you make a call uh, that is uh, playing a, a background music and getting some specific actions. And because uh, the integration with Asteris and FreeSwitch, even uh, when the Asteris and FreeSwitch has good integrations with Erlang and other languages, uh, uh, you see the amount of uh, commits, uh, for example, for the PHP interface for AGI uh, for Asteris or the amount of li libraries that uh, are updated and co in constant change uh, for interfacing with the Asteris and FreeSwitch, you can realize uh, that all the people is using preferably uh, PHP instead of other solutions. And uh, in, at the end, uh, it's easy to learn because, uh, of course, if you get uh, uh, the PHP uh, code and you get uh, some exercises and you have to perform that, you realize that uh, make that in PHP is easier than in other languages. So uh, the, the people knows that, knows that and uh, a lot of, uh, there are a lot of developers to hire. That means that are cheaper to hire. That, that is uh, the reason that a lot of companies prefer to use uh, PHP uh, instead of other solutions, at least in Spain and in my experience. And, uh, well, we know uh, the specific being uh, platform that has a, a lot of uh, benefits, but the PHP is, uh, uh, we can see that it could be even the, the opposite. Because, for example, Bing has a good concurrency control, but the PHP 
uh, when the, they want uh, to get uh, some specific concurrency, they use uh, Redis. But uh, well, of course, Redis is not uh, uh, what uh, is needed to say. Well, well your your program is uh, concurrency prepared. So uh, PHP, for example, a single thread is not possible to run other thread. But even if it's possible because a uh, fork exists, <laughs> that uh, means that it's not cheaper uh, to create another process, and the process uh, is linked to the previous one. And so uh, backroom, backroom, uh, project, uh, no, backroom tasks are not possible at all. And uh, other solutions, uh, WordPress and other made, is uh, using a cron in the system to call to HTTP and then perform some activity. Of course, that is uh, uh, linked to the time. Uh, PHP has a limitation of uh, runtime and uh, is prepared to run and die. So sometimes it's uh, dying for some specific reason and uh, you cannot handle if uh, that was OK or not. You cannot restart. You have not supervisors. And of course, it's not real time. So whatever is uh, used uh, with PHP is not related uh, to make something uh, with real time. Uh, and you cannot uh, rely on the time uh, specifically for uh, measure some specific events. And uh, at, at the end, uh, uh, whatever the implementation PHP we are using, if it's uh, inside of uh, Apache or is in, uh, using FPM, uh, we are linked to the process of the system. So uh, each uh, or the threads depends on the, the implementation. But uh, they are very limited. So uh, if we have a system that is running uh, for accepting a lot of uh, incoming uh, requests, uh, you have only the chance that uh, your requests are resolved as uh, fast as possible to get room for more requests. But if not, the limitation is there, and the only possibility to scale is creating another new servers. And uh, we're paying to don't need uh, concurrency because uh, it's uh, the limitation that uh, you cannot uh, throw away. Uh, and of course, uh, PHP is very flexible, and uh, well, with great flexibility comes great responsibility. So uh, uh, this is a list uh, from the April of uh, 2019, the, the, yeah, the last month, about the vulnerabilities on WordPress. It's only related to WordPress. Uh, Drupal has a lot more. But uh, this, uh, for example, the World Fence uh, was uh, pointing that uh, that kind of uh, errors, for example, the file upload was very dangerous because all the people uh, give all the uh, possible um, access or uh, grants uh, to PHP to run everything that is under the same uh, code uh, directory. and. WordPress is writing in the code uh, directory. So if you are uploading a file and uh, you know where could be that file, uh, maybe you are putting that in your own code, and then you can run your own code inside of uh, the site. That is happening a lot with, with this kind of projects. And this is uh, mainly the, the first um, um, theme because uh, the people that is using PHP is uh, trying to move uh, away to other kind of solutions uh, to gain the, a, a bit of uh, security at least. So in this case, as we said, uh, Beam uh, comes and saves the day. So even if, but uh, well, uh, Beam uh, has uh, the the problem uh, that uh, well uh, is uh, there uh, to save uh, uh, against uh, the, the 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 problems we saw with PHP. But uh, even if it's easy to learn, OTP is not. If uh, a, a fact, Erlang uh, Erlang is uh, probably the most uh, easy language to learn because uh, well, you have only case if uh, maybe it's a 
keys of keys, and uh, you have not other control structures. Uh, the types are very simple, and uh, you have the immutability. So, in at the end, uh, Erlang is very easy to to learn. But uh, when you go deeper, you need uh, to use OTP, and ETP is not uh, as easy as uh, Erlang. And but uh, it hasn't an accepted syntax. Uh, it's weird. So Erlang um, is not an uh, accepted syntax that is using because it has not uh, curly braces and and even there is a uh, target as a weird language because it's uh, more similar to Prolog instead of the others and the others uh, all the people learn it in the university so are used uh, to that kind of syntax. Uh, so there are no working code, well, maybe only Photonic these days. There are not uh, a lot of code uh, for Ireland that uh, you could see, well, we can create uh, websites like uh, Maybe Sotonic is the only one that uh, you could say that it could be a very representative uh, CMS that uh, could be in use uh, for websites or web applications. Uh, well, in Elixir, we have now a Phoenix framework and other solutions, but even in that uh, case, uh, we have not CMS. And uh, they prefer to make a workarounds because uh, that uh, sounds better for them than the starting from a scratch. Uh, sometimes, uh, well, if we had to put Redis, maybe that is better than starting from the scratch. And, uh, but uh, of course, uh, they are only adding the more uh, touch depth and uh, that is increasing and increasing and uh, they have not uh, idea what is doing the, when the, they're doing that. And, and uh, at the end, uh, needs to be more simple, flexible, and have more examples. I think uh, that is uh, the, the final uh, thought uh, I have about uh, the, um, the specific ecosystem for, uh, about Erlang and Elixir. We need more code, more examples, and more uh, uh, something that could be simple and flexible. So PHP over Erlang. So that is... Uh, Keep in mind that uh, I was explaining in the architecture of uh, PHP. I put uh, for each uh, ball here what is a real module uh, implemented for uh, ePHP. That is, for example, I created the ePHP context to handle the, the, the whole context. That is uh, the main and the gate to start uh, with the evaluation of the, the code. And then the event, you, you have the PHP bars to create bars. You have the functions. You can create the list of functions. And even you can add your own. And uh, the, the creation of the configuration, the flexibility of the errors that could be go to the output or the uh, log files. You can get the output directly to the uh, standard output or directly to another uh, variable to be in use uh, for whatever we need. And uh, we have uh, the streams that uh, that was in, I implemented that uh, this year uh, because I realized uh, that uh, FOpen in, in PHP is using different schemas and depending on the schemas, uh, they can access uh, to HTTP, FTP or other ones. Uh, by default, it's only developed at the PHP, ePHP stream file. But uh, if you include uh, as a dependency ePHP, you can implement your own. Uh, for example, you have some specific way to, to get the, the files, uh, or, or you can simulate that those files are inside of a database or inside of a MongoDB or whatever. Uh, you can make the, create in your own schema. And uh, well, the base is uh, you create a context. Uh, the context uh, contains Everything that uh, is uh, around, uh, the parts uh, are created uh, uh, mainly the super globals that are intended to be the uh, get, post, request, and the session server, uh, usual um, uh, super globals that uh, are always available in PHP. Uh, we have the, the, the normal classes, the standard class, and uh, some specific interfaces. 
uh, object system at the beginning, of course. ePHP include uh, uh, all of the code that uh, are included by your code uh, is inserted here to be in use uh, uh, because uh, to, uh, to avoid collides, uh, you use uh, include once or um, so on. So the ePHP works in the sense that uh, using the, the modules of uh, ePHP parser that uh, has uh, different ones, because uh, finally I had to write uh, the parser by myself, because uh, PHP has uh, hair docs and uh, that are very difficult to parse uh, with the usual uh, lexer. Um, so I wrote it uh, completely in Erlang. And uh, that is parsing completely the, the, EP, the PHP code, um, compile that uh, in um, tuples uh, and records. And that representation is sent uh, to the ePHP interpreter to be run it on top of uh, Erlang. So you can inject some specific variables. You can get variables uh, from the interpreter. You can interact with the execution of uh, PHP. And uh, keeping the separate, uh, the parser and the interpreter, and uh, I make it uh, in, this, in this way, uh, because uh, some implementations, uh, I wanted to get a cache, a cache uh, for some specific compilation that was made uh, in some step, like uh, when you are using Elixir, for example, uh, you can perform that uh, in the compilation, and then you have uh, the compilation prepared for the interpreter directly uh, to be run in the runtime. Uh, that is an example. When you are using the parser, that is a PHP code and the generation in the tuples and records. Well, of course, this is uh, because uh, uh, Erlang was not recognizing that uh, the records uh, that uh, is recognizing it. And you have there everything about the devaluation, the, the statements that is running, is an assignation that has uh, the variables and everything that should be running. And this is uh, ePHP func, that uh, is uh, the, the function implementation. And this is a behavior in Erlang that uh, you can extend to create uh, your own libraries. Uh, for example, uh, well, I put the, the example uh, uh, in advance, but uh, I created other projects uh, where uh, I needed uh, to create uh, specific functions uh, to be handled for, from PHP. So if you need uh, from the PHP code to have available some specific functions, uh, you can create your own uh, Erlang module, uh, define your, the specific functions, grow those functions in uh, Erlang, so it's easy if you have the, the base uh, made in Erlang, you get uh, only the API you want to publish uh, to PHP, and then this PHP code is only using what you publish it, uh, to it. So it's uh, secure, it's, uh, it's flexible because uh, you are uh, letting to the, to the users uh, to, to handle other different languages that even is not compiled, it's, uh, it's a, possible even the being modified in runtime. So uh, have the possibility and the flexibility uh, some specific project needs. This is, for example, the content of the init function uh, to declare what functions uh, should be available. Uh, this is in, in the library array. And uh, you see there, for example, in array count, array merge, list, array unique, that are uh, the, the default library for PHP that was implemented in PHP. And the uh, function is like that. So I wanted to publish uh, in array. You see above, I publish in array, should be have uh, arguments, two minimum, three maximum, uh, the default is something is wrong, is undefined, and is accepting uh, mixed, that is uh, equivalent to any in the, the, um, the specific language of uh, Erlang, when you are reading the specific uh, functions uh, in the guide reference uh, for PHP, if you see mi mixed, it's uh, because it's, well, you can uh, 
put uh, whatever you want. And uh, the second uh, has to be an array. And then the third is a, um, is a optional. And uh, should be a Boolean. And the default is, uh, if it's not available, is false. So uh, in the array, you get uh, oh, here. The in array is pasting the context that is not used, uh, so is in R. The line when the, the code is uh, executed, the first uh, parameter, the second, and the third. So you make uh, the specific uh, execution based on the, what is paced directly from PHP. Uh, this is the, the list of uh, libraries available uh, by default in PHP, ePHP, that are available from the beginning when you install uh, as a dependency PHP. You have functions for arrays, classes, uh, the control of uh, the execution, the date format. Uh, even for dates, I had to include uh, some specific dependencies for Erlang uh, to control the time zones and so. And uh, the errors, uh, execution in the shell that, uh, well, you can include it or not, depending on the, the security you want to get. And, uh, well, you. Finally, you have the, the mainly most used uh, functions that I was uh, getting from the uh, current uh, running pr projects like WordPress, uh, what was the most used uh, functions and uh, there are. And some examples uh, like uh, ePHP JSON, ePHP MySQL, and ePHP XML that I made outside because, uh, for example, in the case of uh, ePHP JSON, it's including JSON JS uh, one that is uh, on a other Erlang dependency. So maybe you are using this uh, for some specific use, and you are not using JSON. Maybe you don't need that. Um, it's not needed to include that dependency. So you can use. Uh, include it as another dependency and then include uh, the library JSON even in the php.ini because uh, that is made uh, to use uh, the extension specific uh, configuration to load uh, dynamically all the modules uh, with the same specific name the php leaf uh, from the from the path so uh, the examples uh, I wrote uh, last year uh, this uh, medium post that is a developing bot using TDD on Erlang without writing a single line of code in Erlang. This is uh, based on a project uh, called Snatch that uh, we made in, in the previous company I was. And uh, that is uh, creating some specific element that is calling in uh, is uh, configuring a XMPP network. It's connected to Jabardi, Mongoose IM, or whatever XMPP server. And uh, that uh, specific Erlang project, uh, you can follow the steps. It's easier because uh, you can only need to, to get a rebar new project, uh, include the dependencies. Um, well, no. I create uh, specifically the dependency for a snatch PHP that is in charge of uh, start everything that is needed uh, to get uh, work in the snatch and PHP. And then the, you only need uh, to put specifically one code like this uh, in the brief deer uh, to get working uh, the, the, the thing. And uh, well, this is based also in the snatch has a testing platform that uh, uh, led to you to write an X XML uh, contract. That is, uh, if you send this specific stanza to the XMPP uh, server, you have to receive this other. Uh, well, deposit. If you send to the component this stanza, the component should receive, uh, should send back uh, this uh, response. And uh, for example, in this code, you can see there are uh, two functions that are a snatch send binary and a snatch message. Those are the two functions uh, implemented in Erlang 
that was exported uh, to being user for PHP. So uh, at the end, uh, you can check that. The, the stanza, that is an XML part of a uh, message you receive from the server, is a uh, part that to be stored in the request. You can get uh, that request uh, as a variable in PHP. You can make some specific transformations. You can make whatever you want. And uh, before to end the code, uh, you can be able to perform some specific action, like in this case, uh, send back a message changing the from and to, uh, to send back uh, like an echo bot, uh, send back uh, uh, the same message to who is sending to you that. Also, the stanzas are that. Uh, the first one is, uh, for example, from Bob to Alice, uh, being Alice a component in XMPP. And the response, uh, you can notice uh, the from and to are the opposite. So there is uh, the Snatch uh, PHP that is uh, published in GitHub. It's uh, open. And uh, the library for use uh, with EAPHP that is publishing the, the functions. Uh, other example is uh, I published it in Twitter uh, last uh, two months ago, more or less. Uh, I implemented the EPHP template uh, to use uh, PHP with Phoenix framework. So the mission is uh, instead of use uh, the specific tags uh, from uh, Phoenix framework, you can use uh, PHP instead with all the functions, all the capabilities of PHP. Uh, well, that is because I always uh, work with people that only know uh, PHP and uh, pays me to mean a lot of front end uh, code uh, with PHP. And uh, I was too bored to convert that uh, to Phoenix framework format. So then I realized it was more or less the same. So I developed this and it's working fine. So why not? Uh, you can check here an example. Uh, the sample uh, that appears in the Phoenix framework is uh, only put in there uh, and include once to get uh, another file that is in the part of the page. And uh, you can check there that uh, we are putting exactly the same. But instead of uh, .ex, e -E -X, that is uh, the usual format for uh, the Phoenix framework uh, pages, uh, we use PHP instead. And uh, the other page is exactly the same, but using the normal uh, PHP uh, tags. And this is the last example I made with my daughter. It's uh, Anna. <laughs> she made the, the graphs. And uh, I thought, uh, well, because I, I made the game using Elixir. It's a complete game. Well, sorry, I'm not a front-end developer. Uh, but uh, the full game is made using WebSocket. Um, I realized, well, if uh, I create uh, another tab, like uh, code and uh, put the PHP code to get the information about the board and uh, provide us a uh, next move uh, uh, to create something like a bot to solve uh, the, the game. Well, not solve the game because uh, this game could not be solved, uh, but uh, more or less to get a more um, a better uh, score than the others. Uh, so I, I developed this. Uh, I think I, well, I miss uh, the URL. I can pass you if you want it. Um, but the mission is, uh, well, uh, in the normal URL, uh, you can play the game by yourself. And uh, putting a slash bot, you enter this mode. And uh, instead of uh, moving the pieces, uh, you can go to the code part. The code by default I put there is available. So if you press run directly, it's running and solving, well, not solving, playing the game uh, by itself. You can change some parts uh, to check uh, how it's working and uh, make some specific changes. And uh, well, at the end, it's only to check that uh, uh, whatever you, you can make in a flexible and dynamic way, 
you can use, for example, PHP in this way. And this is the site of uh, ePHP. Well, it's not complete. Well, you can get, uh, for example, the information about this available in hex. Uh, so you can put it directly in your uh, applications uh, via hex. And the uh, well, the coverage is almost good. <laughs> it's uh, 87 percent. Uh, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel. Have we got any questions? Uh, okay, I have one. Are there any areas that you're still working on that require help or that require some further attention? Anything in particular? Yeah, sorry. Are there any areas that require more implementation that oh, yeah. you could do with assistance or help? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, even the, I create uh, some specific uh, files uh, in the project uh, that was required by GitHub, uh, the code of conduct or something like that uh, to require help. And I think uh, there are some issues open it because uh, there are some tricky parts that uh, uh, I'm not, uh, I could not say if uh, that could be a bug or a feature in PHP, but uh, that is behaving uh, uh, different from the, the implementation of uh, PHP I made. So, well, it could be a uh, good, <laughs> Could be good uh, to get help on that. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much. Oh, we got a question. Just a curiosity. So, out of curiosity, just one question that I mean, would it make sense to convert the PHP to uh, Beam bytecode? Would it make sense, or just uh, I mean, would it make any difference, uh, or is it better to do a directly translation to our lang? Uh, uh, just to make a translation. Uh, well. If you think about, uh, for example, the main of the companies that use uh, PHP, uh, when they want uh, a bigger need, uh, they need uh, to install some specific things around, like uh, RabbitMQ, Redis, and a lot of things. But uh, you think about, uh, well, if uh, instead of that, if you are creating a microservices uh, system and you can perform some specific uh, system uh, with the critical part in Erlang and put uh, your business logic in PHP to be compatible in some way as uh, the others, maybe you could consider to to make uh, the the jump the, into Erlang. All right, all right, okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, just one more question, like, uh, PHP, do you, uh, when you work with PHP, like, as you said, it's very simple, and I also really like PHP code of way of doing it. But do you see any particular, uh, uh, particular feature of PHP which can be like uh, that is helpful for the Erlang to use or like the integration is easy or anything like what is the uh, interest of making Erlang modules and that's using in PHP is there any way in that oh good question is uh, well PHP is easy and flexible and that is uh, because of the most of the people is uh, more intended to use PHP instead of others uh, but I think, uh, for example, in this case, if uh, your company has uh, an Erlang pr project or product, even mm -hmm. could be rather than Q, and uh, you want to get a module on top, and you put uh, PHP because uh, you are used uh, to do that uh, with PHP, and uh, you are modifying and realizing that, uh, well, it's not as difficult as you thought. Maybe you are inside of Erlang uh, as, uh, faster than uh, you expect. Yep. Thank you. How uh, far are you from running something like WordPress, something large? I'm on it. <laughs> Working on it? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, it uh, was the first objective uh, to get to run in the WordPress. Uh, when I'm, I'm, I tried it with uh, Cowboy, but uh, I have to change uh, to uh, JAWS because uh, Cowboy is handling, handling the, the headers in a different way than the PHP, and it's very difficult to change it. And JAWS is uh, fitting well uh, with the purpose of uh, how uh, um, uh, PHP is uh, handling that uh, from the beginning. I have the libraries uh, to handle the, the requests, and uh, I tried uh, to run the, the installation of uh, WordPress. And at the beginning, it's uh, showing the first uh, page. 
about uh, well you have not uh, the database available <laughs> and that is because i started uh, the implementation of mysql but uh, well i'm on it <laughs> little by little all right any further questions okay thank you